Jeremiah, chapter 6, and we left off in verse 15. We're looking at the judgments that are coming. The warning of God upon Judah. And they're not listening. And this is the current condition of the world, America, and the church. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Nay, they were not ashamed. Neither could they blush. And there's something wrong in a society of a world. When the activities of people, and they can't blush. Now, I live in Daytona Beach, Florida. And we've got some disgusting bathing suits down here and they wear them and they don't blush we had a particular ministry in Daytona Beach that we don't, we don't do but and it was for chicken restaurant and what they would have these women wear for chicken and and it'd be amazing that you would see these girls with their boyfriends or husbands, you know, hugging, walking them off into the into the restaurant. Like, I, I wouldn't let my daughter, I wouldn't let my wife, or if I had a girlfriend, wear anything like that. And there's no blushing. The fact is, when you look at bikinis, what makes it more different from a bra and panty? And when you got people openly involved with sin, as spring break in Florida, and some parts of Daytona Beach with Bikers Week, not all, and with enabling neighboring cities and all, during Bikers Week we have seen women on bikes on the back of bike, no no shirts, no nothing, topless. And they don't care. No blushing. You got the churches, they're in serious sin. And they think they're doing right. Therefore they shall fall. Among them that fell. <laughs> A double falling. There are people that fell because of sin. Israel. And Judah would not listen to Israel's fall. So Judah is going to fall. That's what's worse. Again, it's that child that mom tells him, don't take the cookie. And he goes and takes the cookie, he gets in trouble, and dad gives him a spanking. And then the next child goes in and takes the cookies not adhering to the punishment and the chastisement that the first child got and that is why the prisons especially in America are overfilled because there is no correction and Many of the criminals are not ashamed. Matter of fact, some of them got pride in their crimes. They even got special tattoo marks for their crimes. At the time that I, God, visit them. That's not a good visit. That's not how, how they do, you know. That's not the visit of the first advent. The lamb. That's an angry God bringing Babylon. That's a visit by the second advent upon Jesus and his enemies. But God says, I will visit Judah and he'll visit them with army and destruction and death and captivity. And they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. And you'll see that in Ezra and Nehemiah. And lamentation. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the way. Talking to Jeremiah. Get in the way, Jeremiah. Stand in the way. Interrupt 
the people with the message. And seek. And ask for the old path. There are many churches today where you got the old foundation doing the new carnal ways. No, you don't. The old-fashioned way was to send men out in the streets, set up camps, set up tents, and have old-fashioned hellfire damnation preaching. But you're not going to get that with the Methodists no more because they're they're gone. They they died out. The fires have died out. They had replaced the Holy Spirit with the with the unholy spirit. Where is the good way? That's in Jesus Christ. Walk therein. Well, why do many of the churches say, all are welcome? That's not the old way. Let's do the way of the world. Let's see what the world likes and we'll bring it. That's not. That wasn't in the early church. Never was. Where was there in the early church? Church building. I am a fond supporter of house-to-house -house churches. I've met out in the fields. I've met out in, in, in the parks and all that. That's much better. And ye shall find rest for your souls. That rest is spoken about the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. The rest in the land, that'd be the millennium. When they are in the land, perfect peace. But they said, we will not walk there. We're not going to do what God wants to do. We're not going to obey you, Jeremiah. We're not going to listen to the prophets. We don't care. Again, you, you go up to the churches today. I, I, say, I can speak what I know. Christmas and Easter are pagan. We don't want to hear it. Well, you know, this doctrine that you taught, it's not correct. We don't want to hear it. We're going to do it our way. Your way is not the old way. It's not the way of God. Also, I set watchmen over you. God speaking. Saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. Be listening. Be ready. Be warned. After the first rejection, God said, I sent a warning. I sent a trumpet. And they said, we will not hearken. We're not going to do right. We're not going to listen. We don't care. We don't care for God. We don't care for His way. That is the attitude of America. That is the attitude of the world. That is the attitude found in many churches. Therefore hearken ye nations outside of Israel and Judah, the Gentiles, and know, O congregation, what is among them, the Jews? Hear, O earth. Now, this expression is going to come again, O earth, earth, earth. It's an important expression. See, the Bible is written to the earth. Everybody, all, in the earth. That's written to me today, verse 19. I'm saved, born again, O earth. The Bible is written to the Jewish people. And nobody else but the Jewish people. The Bible is written to Christians. And only Christians. And the Bible is written to the world. And only to the world. And the Bible is written to Jews and Christians. And the Bible says, the study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, 
rightly divine the word. Who is God speaking to? And you can't go in there as a Christian and say, okay, God said it, I'll claim it, and it's not for you, but it's for the Jews. Or it's for the Gentiles. And one great error of the church is when they run to Matthew. And they run to Hebrews. It's not church doctrine. You there. So God is sneaking to the earth. Behold, I will bring evil upon this people, the Judah. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Your thoughts are sin. Because they have not hearkened unto my words. Nor to my law. But rejected it. We're not going to do it, they said. We're not going to walk therein. We're not going to. And God said, O earth. Listen up. Pay attention. Because if my people don't obey. And if I bring judgment upon my people. And, 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 and judgment begins at the house of God. What do you think is going to happen when it comes to your turn? What do you think is going to happen when I stand in front of you and I judge you? If I judge my people, I'm going to judge you. Be warned what happens to my people because it will happen to you even worse. But worse so for God's people because Israel has the law. The Christian has all the books of the Bible. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba? I would assume probably maybe the best incense. And the sweet cane, sugar. From a far country. Your burnt offerings are not accepted. Nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. They're religious. They're going to the temple. They're bringing the sacrifices. And they're bringing the offering. God says, I ain't taking it. Now where are you going to hear a message like that in your church today when they run to Malachi? Bring your tithe, bring your tithe. And God said, you know what? I don't want it. Because they're bringing it because they have to bring it. They're bringing it because you forced the message upon them. They're bringing it grudgingly, which Paul said you're not to. They're bringing it because they have to bring it. God said, I don't want it. You know, if you give an offering... Other than willingly give an offering and wanting to give God an offering without pressure, any other offering is not accepted by God. How's that for a Baptist preacher? And if you got to run to Malachi, you're perverting the scriptures because Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, you want to give to the Lord? You give not you give not of necessarily, you give not grudgingly. You give of a willing. And if you want to run to a period of time when when they were in the wilderness and, and Moses told the people we need we need instruction and we need material to bring that tabernacle, and they brought willingly and they got to the point where all right, we got enough, stop bringing. And that's what your churches want today. Oh, we got too much. And they wouldn't say stop bringing. They'd bring more. <laughs> and they were not forced to bring those offerings. They said, hey, listen, God has a need. There was a legitimate need. You want to do it? Do it. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. And I guarantee in that congregation there were people who did not bring. And I guarantee in that congregation there were people that brought above and beyond. Because they wanted to bring. And we get into that, that 
place of, you know, giving. And I'm telling you right now, and they'll even say, you know, they'll come to the church and, you know, all we hear is giving, 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 giving. Yeah, shut up. There's other things in the Bible. If you are doing the work in the ministry of God, he will provide for you as you need, as you feed the sheep. And when you feed the sheep and you got healthy sheep, then they will have wool and they will have meat and they'll have warmth. They'll have all they can give from you if you treat the sheep well and feed them well. Now, if you're starving the sheep and you got injured sheep, and you're not caring for them and you got lame, they're not going to be able to give you nothing. I just learned of a church where they get tons of money from somebody across the nation. Well, what about your own sheep? You feed them with goat food every Sunday morning. God, here they're religious. They're doing what the law prescribes. God says, "I am not accepted." Because they're giving it, doing it in sin. And there are members of churches today doing what the preacher tells them what to do. And they're doing it in sin. God's like. And the preacher said, hey, you're doing well. You're doing great. God will reward you. And they'll get the judgment seat of Christ and find out it was a bad attitude. And they get nothing. Or these preachers, they make up these crowns. If you do this for the church, you show up for church work day and all that, oh, the re great rewards you, and you'll get ahead and find out there are no rewards for that. Especially when you take care of a church building and ground and you don't preach the gospel. There are people who will go take care of the church ground, the church building, and not witness at all the gospel which we are told. And the preacher tells it, oh, great, you know, how wonderful you'll be. You know, no, 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 no. God says, I don't want it. Seek the old paths. Do what I told you to do. They're not listening to my words. Give me one Bible verse. New or Old Testament where you take care of the grass at the church house. Come on. And how many verses can I tell you about going out and telling lost people about Jesus? Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I, God, will lay a stumbling block, plural, before the people. Things that will make you trip, fall. And the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them. God setting up things. For you to fall. That's a loving, great, great, wonderful God that we have that's not the liberal God. You don't want to do right, God will have you fall. That could be one of the things of the troubles and problems you're having. A, one of them. I'm not saying it's D1. But if you've got troubles and problems in your life, it may be because you're not doing right. The neighbor and his friend shall perish, die, and go to hell. God's people. Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, under the church age, if you're God's people, you don't die and perish. You'll go to be absent from the body and present with the Lord just as much as any Save Christian will, but you will not like your judgment seat of Christ. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people coming from the north country, Babylon, a great nation, Babylon, shall be raised from the sides of the north. They shall lay hold on the bow and spear, army, military, weapons, they are cruel, 
We've already seen they will have no regard for males and females, young or old. And have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea. They ride upon horses. Set and ray as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. That army's coming. Still time to repent. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble. We're getting weak. We're in anxiety. We're in fear. We're trembling. Anguish has taken hold of us. And pain as of a woman in travail as she's ready to give birth without no medications, no numbing, no anesthesiologist. That's also that woman in travail and pain that pictures the tribulation period. When Babylon comes, it'll be a type of the tribulation. When the Antichrist comes, it will be worse than Babylon. Go not forth into the field. You, know, you almost see the reference there, Jesus, if two be in the field, don't, don't go back to your house. Now, it's not a direct reference to the tribulation period, but the context is there. Nor walk by the way. For the sword of the enemy and fear is on every side. That's tribulation. That's tribulation. O daughter of my people, Jews, and thee with sackcloth, they're mourning, wallow thyself in ashes, they're just defeat like Job. Make thy mourning. You know, this could Lamentations. Lamentations. As for an only son. He had no other children. Most bitter lamentation. His son has died. He had no other children. For the spoiler shall suddenly come upon us. I have set thee for a tower. And a fortress among my people. Jeremiah. That was back in Jeremiah chapter 1. That thou mayest know and try their way. They are all grievous revolters. Walking with slanders, liars. They are brass and iron. They are all corrupters. Not good. The billows are burned. The lead is consumed of the fire. This is metal, silver work. And the founder melted it in vain. For the wicked are not plugged away. All your resources, all your ore, no value. Reprobate silver shall not call them. Reprobate silver shall men call them. No value. Because the Lord hath rejected them. They won't get right. They won't do what God tells them to do. We're in that period today. I think the rapture is not glory to God we're being called out of here. I think the rapture gets to the point in Revelation chapter 3 you know what? I'm sick and tired of those Christians. I'm sick and tired of how they're acting. Get them up here. Get them up here and get them in that judgment right now. Let me deal with it. It's almost like when dad comes up. All right, come on. Come with me. You're in trouble. 